We're going to look at how we can build uh, complex um, forms and views in Power Pages just like you'd have out of the box in Dynamics. So before we go into this detail, um, let me share a little bit about myself. So my name is Angeliki Patsiavu. I work in Avanat and I, as you can see, <laughs> I have a little bit of an interesting accent. So I've been living in the UK for the last 11 years, so it's very much home, but I'm Greek Italian, hence the varied accent. I'm also an MVP in business applications here in the UK, as well as a certified change practitioner uh, from ProSci. And you may wonder, how do these two go together? Well, let me tell you something. I'm a bit of a hybrid. So I started my career early on in CRM. So I speak, breathe, and love CRM. Um, and I've started in digital marketing, then moved into change management, eventually in the lovely world of functional architecture. So what I do love doing is building solutions and bringing all that to life. I'm also very active in the Microsoft community. I love speaking, engaging with all of you, blogging. Um, so uh, my blog in part, humans.net. Thank you to everyone who's supporting. It's a great outlet for um, sharing content, but also in a very authentic way. And uh, because what I've always been passionate about is the human impact of the tech that we built. So I kind of coined the term human evangelist, similar to how you have all the amazing tech evangelists, all the amazingly technical people in the room. Someone else who's going to talk about why are we building what we're building and why are we having that kind of deep human impact? Some of my socials are there, so I would love to connect with all of you. Now, you may wonder, why are we even talking about this? Complex forms in power pages, views, isn't that more or less out of the box? Like, where's the complexity coming from? So let me tell you a story about why Dynamics 365 or generally model-driven apps are special. So what we find out of the box is that when we look at views, like very standard views, we tend to find that this is an out of the box feature. You can you know, have a filter view of all sorts of data. You can open the rows, interact with them. And as you open them, they can be pretty complex. So super rich functionality. You can have all sorts of tabs. You can interact with data. You can add subgrades, lookups, all sorts of components. And it's fairly awesome, fairly out of the box. but when we move into Power Pages, we do notice that the functionality is not necessarily out of the box itself. So practically, if we think from a views perspective, which means we're going to use lists to portray this, there's a bit of a, um, let's say, limitation. So what we're going to see later in the demo, they can only be in, um, connected to three things. It's either a basic form, which, um, by the way, basic form can only contain one tab. It can be a web page or a URL, which is pretty much websites. And with that in mind, makes you wonder, how are we going to create this functionality if we want to have the views opening up rows with multi-tabular data? So that's where we come in. And we're going to hack the system like we were an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Let's look at the requirements. So as an agent, um, remembering the previous demo that I did where we had Event365 as an app supporting the um, Avengers preparing for battle and managing all the villains, the protected city, all the cool superheroes. Similarly, and these are very much CRM backend users. Shield agents in this case are end users, front end users, in fact. They're going to be using Power Pages to support the Avengers as and when. So essentially, they need a portal where they can view all of the battles that the Avengers have faced um, in the past as well as what's coming up currently and in the future. Now, with that in mind, we want each row to hold data that the shield agent can open and see all the relevant tabs. So we very much want to go down the multi-tabular view path. And with that in mind, we want to have some permissions in place and um, some customization. So if the record is for a past battle, so it's very much done and dusted, then we want it read-only. But if the battle is about um, the present or the future, then very much we want to be able to also edit it. We want to be able to see all the tabs, interact with all the rich functionality. And of course, because we as agents want to support the Avengers as much as we can, we also want to add new battles should they come our way first. So how are we going to translate this into a recipe for success? Let's visualize this first as our ingredients, and then we're going to go straight into the demo to see it in practice. So first of all, 
as we said, we want to view. To do that, we're going to create a list. And this list, we have three types of actions. We want to be able to create new records, as in new battles. We want to be able to view details, as in read the details of any kind of battle, whether it's a present or a past record. And we also want to edit the battles, as in the records, that have not um, closed yet. Now, this filtering will make sure that we see everything to begin with, but then the interactions with the data will change. In order to create a new battle record, we're going to keep it simple. The basic form will do the job because we are very happy with a single tab. However, and this is where we start hacking the system, because we need to have a multi-tabular view, we go into the fantastic world of multi-step forms. So this is where we're going to build two different multi-step forms, one for editing data, one for reading data, because you guessed it, one cannot allow us to interact with it, just view the details. And the way multi-step forms work is that each tab is called a step, and thus, because our records need to have three tabs, thus each form, each multi-step form, we have three steps. The other part of the hack that we need to consider is that, as we remember, a list, when we create actions, can only be engaged with either a basic form, a web page or a URL. And this is where we bring web pages into the picture. We're going to make sure that our multi-step forms are hosted with web pages. Now, because we are creating web pages from scratch, we want to make sure that also we have the right navigation to go back to our main page and generally interact with our portal. Just a quick one on the data model as well, in terms of um, everything that we'll be interacting with that you'll see materialize in terms of permissions. So our main record is a battle, which if you were thinking of out of the box, maybe Dynamics 65, maybe you can call it an opportunity, even though this is very much a bespoke app. Um, our version of contacts is the Avengers, and we are creating for now a many-to-many -many relationship for that, because our Avengers are busy. They could be in multiple battles at the same time. We have protected cities, which is our version of an account with a many-to-one relationship. We have villains. That's a completely custom table. And our villains are equally busy. They sometimes portal to different battles at once, hence many-to-many -many relationships. Based on the previous demo, we have our battle checklist, another custom table to hold our automations for battle prep and management. And of course, we have a currency table. That's the out-of-the-box currency table. Now, a little bit of a fun pun. Um, supporting the Avengers is not an easy job. Like, they are amazing. They're superheroes. It's not simple. But that does not mean the way we do Power Pages cannot be. There's so many features that if we get intimate with the product, really understand what's available out of the box, we can make some pretty cool things happen. And yes, this is a pun. Uh, you may remember from last time as well, I was lucky enough a few months ago to visit the filming location for the Avengers training headquarters. And after multiple attempts of trying to look like I'm flying, I managed it. So absolutely a fun picture to include. So let's go straight into the demo. How about that? So let me switch to the other screen. So let's start off with the app first, just to refresh our memory on the very basic functionality that we want to recreate in Power Pages. So out of the box, we know that either Dynamics 365 or any model-driven app gives us very easily configurable and extendable views. In this case, we have a view called All Battles. We want to see both current and past battles that the Avengers are tackling. And in this case, we also have different columns that we want to see in terms of interacting with the data before we open up each row. So these are very much something we can interact with. How do we bring this into Power Pages? So to begin with, we need to remember that um, we have this view, the old battles view that we are going to be using. That's one of our ingredients. Then we did promise that we're going to work on some forms. So since we're going to have three actions, and uh, we, we're going to have to build a minimum of two or three forms. Now, I wanted to keep it simple. So to do that, I created two forms rather than three, and I'll tell you why. When we are creating a new um, record, we said we're happy with a single tab. And when we're editing a record, 
we want the full three tabs, but ultimately those fields are open regardless. So I kind of hacked it by saying I'm going to have a single form to tackle both. And I do like um, adding that the um, form is about the portal so I can separate it from my main forms from the app. So this is what I've specified. That's one of our forms. So all of the fields, all the rich functionality is there and it's open. And the other element is having a read-only form for the portal. This is when we have uh, battles that have concluded and we don't want to show um, the record as being open and thus editable. So these are the two ingredients we want from the maker portal. And the rest we start building as we go. So let's go to the design studio. Now we're going to work a little bit backwards and instead of going straight away and creating the list that we can see here, we're going to build like a Lego the ingredients first. So we said we're first going to need a basic form. This is for the very simple action where we're going to have um, a new record created, a new battle record. So here we have created a new one, new battle basic form. Um, it's super simple actually. So. As long as we have the form I showed you earlier, we're going to use that. And what are we being asked? We're asked for a name. We're asked for the entity name, the table name. Easy. Then we're going to be asked what form we'll be using. So in this case, um, it's this particular one, create an edit battle form portal. And then we're going to be asked about the tab. As I said, it's perfectly okay to use this even though we're only using one tab because you're selecting it anyway. So, you know, hitting two birds with one stone, choosing your website, this is an insert one, and that is all that it is for the basic form. That is super simple. The fun starts when we start building the multi-step forms. Now, there's all sorts of things to remember about multi-step forms because you're building the steps. So I'm going to show you how um, we did the edit one, but ultimately the read one, uh, as in for editing or reading only details, it's exactly the same. The only difference is you're connecting to different forms from the maker portal because ultimately one is read only, one is completely editable. So let's see the ingredients behind this. So you have a few things here that you've been asked. Um, very simple on the first step. So the general tabs just ask you for a name. You're going to put your website. In this case, it's called Shield Declassified. And uh, then the MIDI part is in the form steps. So you can add them from here. And the idea is that you add each tab as a step. So for example, the summary tab, which is meant to be our first tab. And you might have noticed this is what I've added as a start step in the beginning of the form. It's asking us for a few different things. So we want to make sure we're connecting it to the right form, the right tab, then connecting it to the next step as well once they've all been created. Um, and of course, making sure you're, you're in the right tab. So as you iterate this process, um, you end up with the different steps. A bit of a, a thing to remember though, is that if you have richer functionality, um, there's two implications. If, for example, you're creating a subgrid, you have to work a little bit harder to create that there. Otherwise, it looks like a static table. And the other thing is, ritual functionality means related tables, which means children permissions. And we're going to look at that in a bit. So now that we have seen more or less how the multi-step form works, we also need to include a web page to host it because the web page is the link back to the list. So to do that, we are going to um, create a web page, which you can either create here or directly into Design Studio. But ultimately, remember, if you did from here, it's a shell. You still need to configure it back into the Design Studio. And how that looks like if we go to the Design Studio is that we're going to have a blank page that is going to have our main styling sheet. And then we are going to add a multi-step form component. So Obviously, because we've configured the multi-step form already, it's just about enabling it. Um, and once we do that, it's super important that we add a button for navigation at a minimum. You know, add your heart content, make it even um, more complex if you'd like. But the reason is that this is a standalone page. It's great if you open up from the list a record, but how are you going to get back to the list or anywhere else unless you refer to the tab at the top? So. At a minimum, I added this, which takes us to the main list. 
And we iterate the same for the read only uh, form as well. Essentially, they exist on their own, but they interact with the list. Now that we've done that, we are ready to build the list because we've had our components. Now, when we're building the list in Power Pages management, we are bringing all these um, components together, the basic form, the multi step forms, um, through the web pages and whatnot, through a key thing, which is the options tab in the in uh, the list from Power Pages Management, and you do it through grid configuration. Now, there's three actions, as we said, that we want to have. We want to have uh, the ability to create new records, and this is why we have a basic form uh, for new battles. We want to have the ability to read only records if they are past completed battles, and hence we have a web page for the existing multi-step form uh, for read only records, and similarly for edit ones. The final ingredient, once we've done this, is our table permissions. So it's super important that we remember we have a lot of relationships here for our rich functionality. So we're going to tackle two things, basic and child permissions. So once we've done our lovely list, um, and, and there's many ways to do permissions, by the way. Let's remember security workspace, super exciting functionality to, to make sure everything is in there. So as you can see here, we have our basic permissions, we have our basic table, we are making sure that uh, we have read, update, and create based on the main functionality of the list, and then append and append to because of our relationships. Our child permissions is where all the tables from the data model I showed you will come in. Um, no need for roles there, that's all flowing through. And once you've done that, let's see what we got. So this is Shieldy Classified. As an agent, you're welcome to your brand new portal. We are logged in as one of the top agents, which is Maria Hill, and we are ready to support the Avengers. So let's get straight into that and see what our work has brought us. So here I can see there is a list that has been populated. I have access to both old and current Avenger battles. I can create a new battle if I have um, some intelligence and I can submit that. Of course, I can collaborate in the back end with the Avengers, so it's all real time. If I'm going to look at an old battle, yeah, no problem. I click on View Battle Details. I'm going to be redirected to my web page. And then I can go through the different tabs. Once I'm ready, I've watched, I've looked at all the data. Maybe I want to go back to the list. Maybe I want to start updating an existing battle because I have some new intel I need to help Tony with. So this is where I can see my multi-step form is now open. All my rich functionality is here. So for example, my lookups are here. Um, if I go to the next tab, I see my subgrid is going to be functioning in the rich way that I know a subgrid does. Hence why I said, please do configure that as such. And again, once I'm ready, back to the list. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ingredients that we can bring together out of the box. So no need to worry about liquid, JavaScript, and so forth. And I do invite you to see the step-by-step -step creation of all of this in the blog that um, I'll be sharing with you as well. Um, it has screenshots, everything you need to know to build all of this. And I would love your thoughts, comments, feedback as well, because it's been lovely to share it with you. Awesome stuff, Angelique. Are, are you going to show your last uh, slide or do yes, you? Yes, I'm going to go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. There we go. It's got QR so, codes for everybody. So yeah, we got links in the so, chat too. We'll include in the show notes as well. Get your phones out. We got two QR codes. You got my link tree here. So on the left, the scan that you'll find all of my socials, the blog, Generally Empowered Humans, anything you need to know. And then of course, on the right, you have the QR code for the blog post itself that I just showed you step by step prime quality screenshots and guidance to build all of this in your own solutions. So I can't wait to hear back from you. Thank you so much again for the opportunity, Dave and everyone.